Um, so I did start the recording, so this will go out on the Vani podcast too. Um, Woo! As every as everything does, virtually. So okay, um, recording has started. Um, so I guess I'll just do a yeah a brief introduction, uh, and then uh, yeah we'll we'll get rolling here. So uh, yeah, guys, welcome to the uh, first ever Paznia Second Realm Assembly hosted live here on Jitsi. Uh, I'm your host Shane Rayo Two, uh, the Second Realm Coordinator here at uh, the Free Republic of Paznia. Uh, the first geographically independent uh, and first ever free country in existence uh, right now. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to learn more about what's, uh, what we're doing here, uh, just visit the website, uh, paznia.com, for uh, all of the information. Just please do check out the 2021-2022 uh, Stakeholder Bulletin uh, linked at uh, the top of the page. Uh, so, yeah, um, uh, with me uh, right now, um, we've, we're hopefully still waiting on a couple of folks to, uh, to, to show up, but we've, we've got people here already. So, uh, Brian Sovereign um, has, already, has already arrived. Uh, host of uh, the Sovereign Tech podcast. Uh, hopefully, well, I guess uh, Jamie Koenig is not here yet, but hopefully we'll be here momentarily. Um, uh, Josiah Warren is here, though. Uh, he is uh, a, a creator and initial funder of the Passing General Bitcoin Fund, uh, and uh, so he'll we'll, uh, talk about that, and uh, we'll uh, get into uh, some other topics related to it. Um, agenda items for tonight. Um, well, hopefully, if uh, one of our guests, uh, Alex Dishinger, is able to arrive, a uh, recent guest on the podcast uh, from Tucson Bitcoin, then we'll talk about the uh, great passing of Bitcoin mines and uh, see how that can logistically be put into operation. Um, but first, since he's not here yet, I think we'll, we'll start with uh, relocating the Pazniak Committee correspondence. Uh, it's on Telegram right now, and uh, that's, you know, it's, it's fine. It's a good interim, a good interim thing. It's probably not going to go away, um, but uh, we definitely need to get over to... Um, a more uh, decentralized, uh, you know, self-hosted, um, preferably, uh, you know, encrypted platform. And we've got a few that we'll talk about tonight um, on that uh, note. Like I said, uh, Josiah will talk about uh, passing a general Bitcoin fund. And uh, then we'll talk a, a little bit about uh, a recent development with uh, Wasabi Wallets and um, how, uh, you know, the Bitcoin privacy realm, um, at least for the, the passing a general Bitcoin fund, um, it looks like it might be a relocate over to Samurai instead of Wasabi. And we'll, we'll talk all about that. Uh, as we get into it, so I guess we'll start. Um, we'll start uh, today. Um, I guess uh, do we want to do a brief? I guess for anyone who wants to uh, an introduction uh, um, on who they are and uh, you know what brings them to the first ever Paznia Second Realm Assembly. I'll just kind of leave it open. Anyone feel free to step in, or I could choose either way. I'll I'll go first. Okay, very good. I'm Echo Charlie. I found Shane on float. That's about it. <laughs> yes, and I certainly do appreciate you on there. So, uh, yeah, I, I uh, it's good, good to okay. see you. Over. Good, good to get some, uh, you know, some interaction on float. Um, look, I'm very optimistic about that platform. Um, they're uh, leaning towards decentralization, like actual decent, an actual decentralized social media platform. So it looks pretty neat. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll uh, we'll certainly uh, stay in touch on there. That that that's uh, that's great, but. Uh, Anyone else uh, want to uh, in introduce themselves? Uh, what brings them here to the uh, Pazian Second Realm Assembly? Sure, I'll jump in. Um, I am such a big fan of anybody that's like actually doing, you know, practicing what they preach. Um, and Pazania is definitely doing that. You know, Shane is making that happening. Um, of course, I, I'm the host of the Sovereign Tech podcast at SovereignTech.com. Um, I've, you know, communicated with Shane over the years, been a, you know, always just fascinating things going on. Um, and I'm a guy who, you know, spends every week on a podcast talking about fascinating things, but Shane's always out there just implementing and I love it. Uh, so any way that I can be, you know, involved with what's going on at Paznia, you know, I'm here. So that's what brought me here. Fantastic, man. And uh, I guess we got Studio 8424. I'm hoping, I, I kind of feel like that might have been one of Jamin's um, things before on here. On yeah, I'm here on the floor and we work on the, uh, on the TV at the same time. So pardon me, I apologize. <laughs> You're probably getting me on uh, Echo Charlie's device here right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Right on. Okay. Very good. Okay. Just uh, double check in there. So uh, um, Josiah, um, I don't know. Would you like to introduce yourself at all? Um, yeah, sure. So I, um, I'm Josiah Warren. I, uh, uh, stakeholder of Paznia, um, and uh, also, um, created the, uh, Bitcoin general fund or the Paznia Bitcoin general. Uh, I guess it's a, 
mutual aid fund um, just like for general use. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll kind of be talking a little bit about um, how I hijacked a float page to to kind of put some incentive um, to, to, to undergo certain projects um, to like kind of um, uh, basically like um, incentivize uh, things that we want to do um, in the second realm. So that's one of the things. And also um, kind of my interest in uh, the Bitcoin Bitcoin mining um, wanted to see, like the last podcast that you were on with Alex, like it, it was really interesting. And, uh, and also the fact that you, you said that you could get a uh, kilowatt hours really cheap that kind of sparked my interest too. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, th thanks for that, Josiah. And obviously thanks for starting the, uh, you know, I, it wasn't an idea that I, that I had come to my mind. So, um, you know, I, I love, I love to see it. And, uh, it's a, it's a terrific idea. It's a terrific idea. Um, so, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, Silas, would you like to introduce yourself uh, for the for the folks listening and, and viewing? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Make sure my mic's on. Uh, yeah, sure. I was actually going to go next anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just here because I was told there'd be cake, but um, uh, no, I, uh, uh, I'm Silas Ol. I'm I'm the host of RTA Radio and uh, co-owner of the uh, Road to Autonomy magazine. I'm here. I'm one of the original stakeholders in Pasnia. And uh, I keep forgetting about these events, and I actually set an alarm for this one, so I was being responsible. So I wanted to make sure I was here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was at the Constitution signing, so you know. Oh, cool! Um, I'm I'm big. I'm a big fan of uh, any anything that goes on here. Obviously, I, I mean, Shane and I have known each other a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, heck, I've been with him since before this whole Vanu th before this Vanu thing came around. True. So uh, I've been following all this, and uh, I mean, it's because of Shane of Rayo starting Rayo two starting the Vanu podcast. And me listening to it, ever, I mean, I don't think I've missed an episode, uh, even though his, as, as he and I have talked about his former co-host, he's to drive me insane. Uh, but I haven't missed an episode. And because of it, I, I started life on the road. And I've been living as a van nomad now for going on, oh, what are we, in April? Almost four years. Oh, yeah. And the May will be four years that I've been out on the road. So uh, I continue to listen intently to the show and uh, and follow everything, Pazni, and what we're doing. Because, I mean, I mean, I make use of it. And I love being part of it. And uh, since I'm techn technologically challenged, uh, it's good to have the rest of you guys around who know more than me because uh, I get to learn so much stuff. Um, but I I'm definitely psyched because I hope the other guy shows up because I was really interested in the Bitcoin mining mm -hmm. thing. I did a little bit of mining of, in, in my past, um, you know, again, from a total noob standpoint. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Hop on. Yeah. Right. It's well, probably uh, trying to pick up mine. Mine is hooked. Mine at home is hooked. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Tag Bueller, uh, anyone else like to uh, introduce, uh, provide introduction to themselves? So, you know, what brings you to the first second, first ever second realm? Uh, second, second realm assembly? Oh, careful. The birds are back. <laughs> I mean, I, I see it getting into You're good. I started getting into all the open source software and security culture and mining Bitcoin by mining Ethereum and just really involved in the tech sector and I flush phones with graphene and I've been trying to find ways to cut down on all the ways we're surveilled and tracked but it's really difficult and the deeper you go it seems like there's always another thing to learn. And I've been trying to, you know, get a garden going and like just make myself more self-sustaining because the way things are going, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. You want me to get out? It's not me. It's stop. <laughs> it was. I had turned off my. Your microphone is appears to be noisy. Yeah. Jeez. All right. Yeah, Echo, we're uh, we're getting uh, a lot of background noise uh, um, on your end, um, but uh, that's all right. We'll move forward. We'll we'll, we'll roll with it. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, hopefully Alex shows up. Uh, 
with uh, Bitcoin mines. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, we'll talk a, a bit about uh, relocating the Pasadena Committee of Correspondence. Like I said, we're on Telegram right now. Um, we're looking to uh, move, over, move over to another platform. Um, there's a, a number of possibilities. Um, session uh, is one of the newer ones I, I, uh, I came across and actually um, was able to test out with a couple of folks. Um, recently, you, you just have uh, you get a session ID and that's what you share with people. There's no name, there's no number attached to it or anything, and uh, you know you set up an account and you communicate uh, encrypted via that way. And I guess it might be on uh, it, it might be a part of a different project. I don't know everything about it, um, but uh, I've been doing a little testing on it, and uh, it's definitely one that's uh, you know I don't I don't, um, I don't see ruling out yet. So I haven't had haven't tried out the group chats yet, but I do have two people um, from the Pasadena community, uh, you know, from the Telegram group that are in there. So we might try like a. Um, a mock group and see how that's uh, how that looks um, but uh, session is definitely one possibility and uh, I think that's um, I don't remember what all platforms and all. I think it's on most on um, most um, phone platforms but uh, uh, the next one and this I, I don't know this is one that uh, that I, I really wish uh, Jamin was here to to cover um, a little bit um, but it's the uh, XMPP um, Jitsi and Jabber which would basically just be a custom solution um, it would take a little more initial setup, but we would have everything. I mean, it, yeah, a little initial setup, um, but I think we'd have just as much functionality, um, if not more. Um, and yeah, I think it'd be it'd, it'd be pretty cool. I don't know what it would look like um, exactly, and uh, um, that's where Jamin could um, provide some um, some insight. But uh, hopefully, uh, if not now, another time. Uh, and the other possibility that uh, that comes to mind, and uh, for a long time listeners of the Bonnie Podcast or people who have followed my work. Um, Miniverse um, is the newest, um, the newest possibility I've come across, and I haven't had a chance to test it out yet. Um, but it is, it does use the Scuttlebutt um, network protocol. Um, so when we were doing the Darklands project, um, we were considering doing it on Scuttlebutt um, using that. That is a network protocol. I can talk. I can go more into that. Uh, um, I've actually uh, located um, earlier for these purposes the uh, old Darklands white paper, um, which has a little bit of background on the network. Um, on the network infrastructure, if we need, if we want to go into that at all, but this might just be more of a general conversation to see. Um, I don't think we're going to come to any any final solutions um, today, but um, really just open up the floor and and see what uh, what people are using, what people are liking, and uh, what's um, what's needed and what's 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 being looked for. So, um, I guess uh, out of those out of those right now, many uh, many verse session XMPP Jitsi Jabber combination something like that. Um, Tech, um, Brian, uh, Josiah, and you guys are, uh, you know, very much into these into these technical realms. Uh, um, what, what do you think? Uh, what do you, what do you, what what are your ideas? Yeah, I could jump in. Um, yeah, session is interesting. Um, I have looked at that. I do like that. There's no requirement of you know phone number. That's kind of the hard one to do. Um, XMPP, and you know maybe Jamie or Jamie could you know correct me on this. Uh, my only concern with that one is because it it uses a more persistent connection um like there, there's a good so one of the major problems that just about any of these uh communication technologies are gonna are gonna use even if you're using like lineage os or something like that you're gonna run into um like google's push servers right like you're gonna run into gcm google cloud messaging mm -hmm. um, which is a real problem now there's implementations of telegram where they've circumvented that, like you can get Telegram FOSS off of uh, F Droid, you know, on an Android implementation. Um, I mean, you know, with iOS, you know, we're all screwed. So th there's no, <laughs> there's, there's no conversation uh, necessarily on what's available on iOS. I mean, you know, we, we could kind of get into that. Um, but, you know, something that doesn't use GCM and I mean, for me and, and anybody in the community, you know, could, could correct me, you know, if they feel differently, um, I mean, messaging apps are like mission critical, meaning I need consistent uptime, you know, otherwise I'll just use ProtonMail and send an email if it's something that can wait. Um, if it's messaging, like when the notification's coming, you need to get that notification. Uh, and now, I mean, most apps will function without GCM, you know, without, without Google's cloud messaging uh, push notifications, but the app will only know to access the company's servers like say the Telegram servers or whatever, um, if you open it. And so you really won't receive messages normally. Um, like what Telegram FOSS does is it'll, it leaves like a persistent notification open at the top. Now there's a problem there too, because there's a battery drain. 
um, you know, that, that comes into that. And that's important to me as well, especially when we're talking about mobile communications and communications where, you know, I don't know, but I mean, battery power matters to me, you know, like that, that's something just like with laptops, there's great, you know, entire separate internet solutions like RetroShare or something like that, but it'll drain your laptop battery that could go 10 hours. It'll drain it in 30 minutes. Uh, so that's a problem. Um, so XMPP, that's, that's my, I mean, I love XMPP. Like that's such a great old protocol, you know, and tried and true big fan. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I lean in that direction. Have Shane, have you looked at, at all um at threema that's t-h-r-e-e-m-a so it's another one that was recommended along with session um that i haven't had a chance it was session uh -huh. signal that i haven't had a chance to, to try out yet it's, it's i mean there's so many messaging protocol what, what do you think about it? is that is that one worth looking into right yeah um like last year i, I kind of made it my pick on my show um of being like the best messenger out there um you can circumvent, you know, using, using a phone number. Um, and part of what actually put them over the top just in the past couple of weeks, they announced that they've come out with their own push notification, um, you know, solution to get away from GCM, to get away from Google's uh, notification servers. Um, so, I mean, and it has groups, it has, you know, most of the, it, pretty much all the features you would imagine out of a modern messenger, it's all there. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing that might be different than what people are used to is you do have to pay $2.99 for it. And I mean, that's not, you know, $2.99 isn't like a crazy amount of money, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think most people expect it to be free. You can download it independently from their own servers. Like you can buy it, you can buy it with Bitcoin anonymously, and then you download the APK on its own. Um, and because, you know, you don't have to worry about, again, having the Google Play Store or connecting to GCM push notifications, um, I mean, it, it gets pretty high marks for me. I know that wasn't on the list, uh, yeah. but that that's the one that I find to be the, the most interesting. Um, even the government of Sweden, which, or I'm, I'm sorry, Switzerland, because it's a Swiss company. I mean, screw the government there, obviously. Uh, but they've, they've made it a, a legal requirement. Like you can't use, they don't want anybody, or at least in the Swiss military, they don't want them using Signal. They don't want them using Telegram. They don't want using any of that because all of those messaging apps um, fall prey to, you know, the cloud act and other regulations, um, as to where, you know, arguably, and again, take it for what it's worth, you know, uh, like Threema does not, uh, because it's not a company that operates out of the United States in any way. Um, so, you know, I mean, there, there's a, there's really good arguments to be made for Threema. It is a little more complex to set up, but it's certainly easier than XMPP. Okay. Gotcha. So that, that's what I got. Interesting, interesting. And could you speak to? Um, I mean, obviously, it's on. You know, it's it's, it's probably on. Uh, you know, um, the, the the Play Store is on Play the Aurora Play Store or uh, mm -hmm. Android or somewhere. Um, could, I guess could you speak to? Um, I guess is is it just like a peer to peer encrypted app? Is there anything? Um, I because I, I, th I think like Session might actually be on like a block like it might be like a blockchain project or something. So like, do do you know like uh, I guess the infrastructure behind it uh, at, at all? Yeah, it, I mean, it's just, it's end-to-end -end encryption. Um, as far as servers go, you can actually set up, the, it gives you a lot of options in the setup. It's actually not complex to set up, but the amount of things that it lets you do, um, like you can even control your 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 private keys with it, which even Signal doesn't really allow for that, even though like they'll show you the number just so you can verify. Um, it's not it's not a blockchain project. Um, it, you know, but and how it, it can be used on computers through the web browser. Like it has similar to like WhatsApp setup where, you know, it uses your phone's connection. Um, yeah, it uses your phone's connection to be able to like push messages like like to the, the browser instance of it. Or it's not a browser. I think it's like separate software. But regardless, you know, you can use it on, on desktop as well. Um, but it is being end-to-end -end encrypted. Uh, it is open source. It has been third-party vetted multiple times. Um, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, it looks good on that end. Um, granted, like, yeah, it's not something where, yeah, it's not, I don't, I don't know that they are looking at, at, you know, any kind of like blockchain implementation. Similar, because I, I know like Session is like working with, you know, even like Zcash and some others, if I'm not mistaken. But, oh, okay. Um, but anyway, that, that, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'll have to try it out. I mean, it was, it was another one that was recommended, but like, I mean, I, if, if I, I, I mean, I mm -hmm. should have just put down all the ones on the list. 
um and uh gone with that but yeah i guess streamer will be one that's uh yeah i didn't didn't look into it all before but i'll put i'll probably prioritize that one um, for testing purposes um but uh josiah attack do you guys got any any ideas on uh on the you know the, the new platform Yeah, I mean, I no no real ideas. It sounds really good. And I like uh, Brian's point about um, uh, three mob being located in uh, in in that territory, so that it's not, I guess, more vulnerable to uh, um, you know whoever whoever breaks down the door. I guess, like <laughs> as far as <laughs> with signal and some of the other um, things that uh, may be subpoenaed for information, like. So three mess sounds like a good uh, alternative, and I mean session sounds sounds pretty good too. I I haven't played around with those. Um, I I I've been meaning to look at Briar. Um, like I just kind of uh, installed it on the Ghost Phone, um, and it and too, just yeah. kind of uh, played around with it with yeah with Jamin, and uh, it, that seems like a good alternative. But I don't know the backstory as far as like um, where that's located or anything. So. But, uh, yeah, Br Briar's pretty solid. Um, I've been a, a pretty hard champion of that for, for a few years. Um, that's one where actually one of the, the developer behind it is a guy who works with Zcash, like, like he's in the same team. Um, and the, the only issue with Briar, is, well, there's two. I mean, some people, like, as soon as you delete Briar somewhere, all of that history that you have on Briar is gone. Um, like there's no backup server of any kind or, you know, no, no, uh, like copy of, of every message that you send on some other server. Some people see that as a good thing. And I understand why. Um, the other thing is like, it's always routing through Tor. So it's another one of those battery drains, um, you know, that that's gonna, that's gonna be there. But, um, at the same time, like it does so much, right. I'm, I'm a big fan uh, of that as well. So good one to bring up Josiah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, Briar, I, I mean, uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Tack. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. Um, I really like Session, and it does route everything through Tor. It's open source. You can audit the code. Um, they're funding a lot of it, a lot of the servers through a cryptocurrency thing. So that's kind of good in a way, and you just don't know who's funding it, though. So... Um, Briar, Briar is really great. You can even avoid the networks, and if you're close to someone, you can send a encrypted message. I think through Wi-Fi or even Bluetooth. It's got some really cool features, but it's really hardcore. It's like there's always an argument whether you're going to sacrifice usability or security, and I think they're all tools. And if you use threat modeling, you can figure out a plan or what you need to do for your use case. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Bri Briar is a good one to a good one good one good one to bring up. Um I, I don't know. I I think just just off the top of my head, um yeah, I definitely think Briar is one that, that we should we should look into, I guess just test out, um see if it would work for um, I guess, I, yeah, I don't know. Do, is there like a group functionality in, in Briar? Is that, is, that a, is that a thing there? Yeah. Yeah, they do have a group functionality. They also, I mean, it, it, like it has uh, like a blogging platform in it. Um, it even has like a, not just like, I mean, you can do normal groups like you would say on Telegram, but you can also do more like a, like bulletin boards in it. Um, I mean, it, there, there's a lot there, but again, as soon as that device goes away, there's no backup. There's no copying your keys. There's nothing like that. Like as soon as you uninstall the app, even it's all gone. Everything you ever wrote, everything you did gone. Um, so, you know, for some people that's a, that's a barrier. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, at the same time, like it's also really awesome. And, and like TAC was saying, yeah, you don't even need a telco, you know, you can just connect as long as the device is in range, you can just connect with Wi-Fi direct or Bluetooth, um, which, you know, that, that puts it above just about in I, there are there is no other messenger that does that uh, at least with both of those radios yeah yeah that's true so yeah just off the i guess initially i'm thinking um a lot of i guess i'll be focusing my my attention on probably briar and threema and not in that order either not not in that order either um probably threema and and briar in that order um 
Yeah, I still like. I, I need to look into it more. I hadn't had I hadn't had a chance to um, to test it out yet. But my um, my buddy Matthew Raymer from Anomalous Design, he does a lot of really incredible um, like open source development projects. Um, he rec. Uh, w yeah, we we were working on Darklands uh, a few years back, and we were looking at the Scuttlebutt network. And apparently, uh, Manyverse is kind of like a messaging social media platform um, on the Scuttlebutt network, and includes like off grid social media. So like, um, there's a lot of really cool potentials there. I'm not sure if it's like um ready like tomorrow like if, if it was like you know an initial critical situation where we need a messenger i don't think it's like that yet um but i, I think it's something that's um just like the scuttlebutt, scuttlebutt network in general um i think is like um something to to keep an eye on um as as matthew and i have been for for a few years now so um i don't necessarily think that's worth putting uh, putting much of our effort, much of our attention into but um i think uh, someone's gonna jump in well, I was just going to say, like that 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 one many verses not on my radar. I'm definitely going to check that out. That's uh, that's interesting, you know. Even though I, I think social media is ultimately like psychologically harmful, uh, like yeah. that's still a really cool idea, you know. And there's there's certainly a place for that sort of thing. Right, right. And I mean, yeah, the, these are just like you know, these are these are tools and platforms. And and I feel like um, especially with like uh, something like many verse, um, it could be used for our purposes. However, it needs to be you know be used, um, modified, and customized. So. Um, we got, yeah, we've got, got some folks who can do coding and things, so it'd be nice. Um, I guess that's, uh, that's a really good start. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I'll be looking into Threema and Briar. Um, did anyone else have any, any other, uh, thoughts, insights, or no, any other, uh, suggestions they'd like to toss out before we, um, I mean, I don't have much else on that one. I think that's just, that's just, uh, a, a good point. Go and, go and do some testing, but, uh, anyone else have anything to toss out? No. I don't believe so. Okay, well, um, I guess we'll uh, go ahead and uh, move forward to the next item on the on the docket, uh, per se. Um, not the great passing of Bitcoin mines. That might be a, a, a conversation for another time, but um, maybe better uh, related topic. Uh, Josiah, would you like to uh, talk a little bit about the Pasnia uh, General Bitcoin Fund? Uh, take it away, brother. Sure. Um, so just to give you a little overview, um, like I created this, uh, basically it's a, uh, Bitcoin, uh, wallet now. I mean, it's through with Wasabi now, but it's basically its purpose is, uh, more of like a mutual aid fund for, uh, any Pasnians that, uh, um, basically would need to use the fund for a specific purpose. Um, so we started, uh, I think we started it, um, it's been o over a year, I know, I know that. And so far, uh, I guess, like, just to update you on its progress, um, it's, uh, it's received um, some donations, uh, in fact, from some of the members that are here in this uh, call. Um, some of them have contributed, <laughs> I've contributed, um, and, and it's also paid out, um, it's paid out for a couple of different uh, different things um, for people that need it. I know um, in the New York, um, basically uh, Roots Pasnia has uh, used it for several of its uh, homesteading projects. Um, I think uh, they've, or um, he's actually, Stag has actually used it, uh, um, basically wrote up an entire, um, I guess like, uh, invoice of things that he would need to like improve the homestead security um like seeds and stuff like that so uh he basically wrote up wrote that request um and i w was able to pay that out to him it was a considerable amount from the fund um to fund his uh homesteading project so that's kind of a uh one big example i think of the biggest thing um that's that it's been able to be used for. Um, the other thing was, I think, uh, on, I guess like a smaller, um, contribution was towards a legal defense of a, a whistleblower, um, called, or his name is, um, Daniel Hale. And, uh, he, um, was arrested for, um, blowing the whistle on like, uh, um, basically like the state's, um, droning, uh, droning operation. So I believe he's still, serving a prison sentence, but, um, but like 
the Pesnia fund was able to uh, donate about what's equivalent to about a hundred dollars to his like legal defense fund, um, which was another, uh, I think a good thing um, to just to kind of uh, contribute to that. Um, so, so basically how it works is I think anyone um, that's in the, that's a stakeholder is able to um, request uh, Bitcoin from the fund. Um, and it's not, I mean, it's not a big fund right now. It actually is uh, probably a little less than a thousand dollars right now. Um, that's like the balance of it uh, with current Bitcoin prices. But, um, you know, we're hoping that it's going to appreciate. And then with, with, you know, future contributions and stuff like it'll uh, hopefully grow. But, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as the future of it, I, I also had the idea of, uh, creating like a page, um, which has already been done on, actually on float, um, under, under my name, Josiah Warren. If you, if you search on float there, um, it's the, called the BIC, the BTC general fund, um, like basically the, the page on float. Um, so what I've been doing is actually posting, a, uh, like different projects. Um, I guess, as I think of them, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, one of them is actually a a okay. uh, like plant a gorilla garden, and uh, you'll get like I think it's like a hundred bucks or something like that. So basically, <laughs> like if you're in a if you live in an urban waste, wasteland like I do, um, if you you know it's springtime now at least in the eastern uh, half of the U.S., um, it might be good to just go out and uh, plant plant a few things, um, where you get the opportunity, um, that I guess like how you would claim the, how you would claim that is you basically go to the float page and, uh, um, you know, just say that you, you know, that you're interested or you would want to do it and, and you would just have to post, uh, evidence that you've actually completed that. Um, I, I would just like post, um, that the, that the bounty has been claimed. Um, so that's how that kind of works there. Uh, there is another, there's another project out there on the Philip page, uh, for, I believe it's, uh, aquaponics or, um, something involving like, uh, like, um, like fish or like, uh, um, using it to like, um, fertilize, uh, a homestead or something like that. So I think Jamin already scooped that one up. I think he was already kind of working on it. And so I think that one pays. uh... Yeah, (laughs) exactly. So that's cheating. That's just life for Jamin. Come on now. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So so like, I, (laughs) Um, yeah, he said he was already working on it. So I don't know if, how far he is along on that but uh (laughs) um but yeah like when i when when someone claims it or shows interest in a project or whatever i just basically put claimed under the the comments or whatever there's only two projects out there now like i i plan to add more pretty soon um but i guess like uh the main two things i wanted to just bring up tonight was um the fact that i'd like to just uh switch the switch the wallet to samurai and then also give the keys to uh like multiple um stakeholders so that um multiple people have access to the fund um or have control of the fund so that it's not just me uh not just one person you know um and then yeah the other one is just kind of to add more uh projects um uh, as I, uh, as we, as we think of them, or if, if you guys have any ideas too, like that, uh, float page is available. I think it's, um, they're going through some kind of security update now. So I wasn't able to like, uh, bring up the page. I think you have to like reset password or something, um, right now yeah, as of the end, yeah, anyone. Yeah. Their site went through a major yeah. overhaul over the past few days. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to, like, bring up the page or whatever, and then, like, I saw that uh, there's some, like, security updates or whatever. So, um, 
but yeah, you could get to, you just type in my name, Josiah Warren. I think it's just all one word. And then the, the Pesnia general fund should come up for you. It's a private page. So you'd have to, you know, get a username if you don't have one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the, the progress right now on the, on the phone. So that's awesome. That is uh, awesome. And like I, I think I said but before we, um, started recording this thing. That's, uh, it's amazing. Um, I appreciate, uh, your, your efforts. And, um, I did bring up the float page on, um, on the uh, screen for the video viewers and I'll put links to all the stuff in the show notes. And, uh, for those out there who want to support Pazian, that's a great way to do so. Um, donate to the Pazian general Bitcoin fund. Um, and, uh, yeah, help, uh, expand the second realm. So it goes to, goes to a good cause, uh, as they say, um, oftentimes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was mm -hmm. it was fun to fun to put together, and it's great to great to help out the, those that um, that need it. I mean, it's uh, and that goes for anyone in here too. Like, if you uh, are looking to expand like your homestead or or for whatever you know whatever specific purpose, like um, right now, I'm just having the request go through Josiah.Warren at protonmail.com. So, perfect, <clears throat> awesome, man. So we want to talk a little bit about the uh, um, samurai wasabi zk snack, or I, not even the samurai thing. That's a separate, separate. I guess they're kind of they they're kind of in this too. But um, the wasabi zk snack situation. Do you want to provide the brief overview overview for the uh, for the audience, or, or do you want me to? It's up to you, man. Yeah. Oh, and Jamin has arrived. It looks like. Hello. Jamin, how's it going, man? Uh, pretty good, dude. Let me put my things on. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Wow, I can like hear and stuff. What's up? <laughs> hey, welcome. Uh, oh, welcome, Jamin. Let me turn my eye burner off. <laughs> eye burner. What's that mean? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very bright light. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see. That's stupid. Let's see. There's the visual. Are we? 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 Are I guess just to provide a brief summary, because I'd like to get your thoughts, you because you you made the suggestion of uh, um, XMPP, Jitsi, and Jabber, so I'd like to 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 hear your take on that. But um, Brian brought yeah, up, sure. Brian brought up uh, Threema as a uh, as a really solid solution, uh, and uh, Briar was also mentioned, which I I didn't I I didn't think of Briar, but Briar is a you know not a bad solution, I guess, and um, a possible solution. So uh, I guess uh, what uh, what are your thoughts um, on 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 relocating the passing committee correspondence? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I think, uh, XMPP is pretty decent for all that stuff. Um, I'm not that familiar with the, uh, what, Threema. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I, I did some preliminary research on it. I don't remember why I, um, didn't move on from, uh, the Jabber based stuff. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's really like they're also similar when it comes to like this use case. I don't know. Um, it's probably like what people can access the easiest versus, um, I don't know if, if it's going to be like, if the plan is to be self-hosted, mm -hmm. there's some advantages to Jabber because at this point, like there's a lot of turnkey ways of deploying the, the server part. So that's not that big of a deal anymore. 
like the freedom boxes do that. Like why, you know, host does that. Um, so there's like a lot of really easy turnkey jabber servers. And if we're talking about, uh, like Pasnia, then, um, I mean, uh, a virtual private server on the cloud hosting a freedom box based, um, jabber server would work pretty well. I'm not that familiar with the implementation of the other solution though. Gotcha. 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 So I guess, um, and, and we'll, I guess we'll kind of go, get back into this cause I, I'd like to, um, so the, the XMP, XMPP and jabber is a, um, solid solution, but I, I think Brian, your, 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 I guess, hesitancy was, um, I guess reliability on, on one front. Um, was that, is that correct? Well, Far far be it for me to ever debate uh, uh, Jamin on anything, so I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, he's a much smarter man than me. Um, but uh, he's there shaking his head. Um, yeah, so if it's a self-hosted implementation, then absolutely, yeah. Like Jabber XMPP, like that's the way to go. You're not you're not going to make that happen with uh, with Threema. Um, if it's something that Again, Threema's only real advantage is that it exists outside of any Play Store. You can independently install the APK. Um, yes, you still have to buy it, but you can buy it with Bitcoin, you know. Um, and if somebody for some reason is still hard up on iOS, like, you know, like that's possible. Um, but, you know, that that would be, again, you know, that's, a, that's an option that's not self-hosted. Um, and so it, it becomes, like Jamin said, you know, what's ease of use, right? Um, but if you're running a self-hosted instance, like, yeah, go, go Jamin's way. Absolutely. Okay. So I guess we got to talk Briar, about the, just to bring this up, like MPP Jabber one, two, but go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Well, I will say quick, like Briar is something is like technically self-hosted because it only resides on whatever device it resides. And as soon as that device disappears, or again, if you uninstall the app, everything's gone. Um, so like you're not relying on any servers whatsoever with Briar. So mm -hmm. that's where that one gets kind of interesting. Um, but again, you can lose everything as to where, you know, if, you, if you're doing a self-hosted, you know, instance of XMPP, different story. So that, that's what yeah, I got. Peer -to -peer. Yeah, peer-to-peer -peer is where things are, probably should go for privacy and security and anonymity and everything. But um, for sure, I really like Briar and how that's all set up. Um, but yeah, like as far as um, the ability to be like high availability, I don't think you can beat a uh, like a VPS instance of a Jabber server. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Cool. Okay, well we'll have to I, yeah we'll have, we'll have to dig into that more. But uh, but Jamin, you you just said it's uh, it's an easy setup on on the Freedom Box, um, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. You basically. Well, when you set the freedom box up, you set your domain and everything up. And then when you, there's a single click install for the um, Jabber server and you just basically enter credentials and whatnot to set it up. It's uh, there's, it's all done through the web interface too. It's pretty, pretty streamlined and easy. And you end up with a Jabber server that is the address at the domain you picked when you set your freedom box up. So if you, you know, if you had one hosted on a virtual private server, which is the way I have mine set up, um, you basically just, uh, you know, it, I don't, I think it took me 20 minutes to configure it all after I installed Freedom Box on top of their um, server instance that they provided, their Debian instance. So it's pretty, pretty simple on the server side to set up. And then client side, of course, once you have an account with one server, you are then federated for the whole network. Um, if the server is set up to be federated and that's easy to do in the app setup. Mm -hmm. So you Jamie, can, um, no, go ahead. Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, um, did you, so the, the only concern I brought up earlier around, around Jabber was like, was the constant connection and kind of the battery drain. Do you experience that? Cause I, I could actually be out of touch on that one. Like as far as that's gotten better or that's not an issue in the way you have it set up. Well, see the problem really comes from notifications in general. Like when, when I set up the Calyx on the ghost phones, 
I don't include the Google Play emulation or any of the Google service, service emulation on it. Absolutely so right. All of the battery use is more from things getting notifications, kind of like the old fashioned way of running in the background. Exactly. So, uh, my use case, I don't really, you know, it, you're probably right, but for the, for something like a ghost phone or, you know, something that's hardened for just kind of secure communicating, it's, it's just kind of like the price you pay of not having the, mm -hmm. you know, the notification services working with the Google, uh, so, you know, subsystem. Yeah, yeah, because that's what I was bringing up earlier as well. Uh, that was part of my recommendation for Threema was they figured out how to do push notifications without that, without just yeah, yeah. and everything. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, okay, no, I mean you've got that in mind, and you know, so so there you go. Anyway, I that's all I got. Nothing else to add here. Okay. Cool. Right on. Well, that's that's appreciated. Um, that's that's appreciated. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, well, thanks, Jamie. And that was that was uh, that's good stuff. Um, that's, uh, that's definitely good stuff. Um, yeah, so sure. What, what would that what would that look like? Um, I guess uh, if we were to set that up, uh, you know, client side um, as a um, you know as a as a group chat, um, what sort of you know um, what would that look like? Uh, you know, setting that up and have people connect to it. Um, if you could speak to that log logistically. Well, um, <clears throat> sure. Basically, you would download an app for your device. Um, Android has a couple good apps in the F-Droid store, which is the store that's all free and open source software that has been vetted on some level. So basically for Android, it's Conversations um, is probably the standard app. And it's also the app that Freedom Box will point you to. Um, like if this is all set up with Freedom Boxes, even in, even in a uh, virtual private server, in environment, there's a Freedom Box Android app on FDroid that basically um, you put the address of the Freedom Box in and then it enumerates all the services that Freedom Box is running. So it would like pop up that it was running Jabber or, you know, XMPP and you just like click that and it would tell you what client you can install and then install the client for you. So like there's like this whole automated way of setting that all up client side oh, wow. if you download the uh, FDroid app or, or the uh, Freedom Box app off of F-Droid. Um, otherwise, just, you know, go to F-Droid and download Conversations for Android devices. And I forget, um, it's, it's escaping me. There is an iOS application, it might even be Conversations. They might have an iOS for it. I'm not, but, because I have a friend with an iPhone that I got set up with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's fairly straightforward. And then on the desktop, there are a bunch of Linux apps for it. Um, I'm trying to think the uh, name of the one I'm using now. I've been playing musical chat apps, so. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to like, look. <laughs> it's on the computer upstairs. It's all good. Dino, uh, can Dino. anybody hear me? Dean. Uh, Yoda Lorian, yes. Uh, welcome, oh. welcome to the first Pasnia. Second oh, thank seven. you. How's it going? Thank you. Uh, oh. Doing good, doing good. Thanks for welcoming me. Um, just a note on iOS from what I've heard from people who have iOS devices, XMPP clients kind of suck. Just just saying. In case you have an iOS device, uh, I've heard it's a bad experience on there, but that was all. Okay. Awesome. Well, not not saying uh, don't use it, because I use conversations all the time on Android, and it's great, but just for iOS users, something to uh, be aware of. Yeah, I know I had a hard time setting my friends up. They didn't want to authenticate or something, I forget. Yeah, um, one of the guys I talked to online, his uh, soon-to-be wife uh, has an iPhone and conversation that not conversations but the xmpp client that's available uh it doesn't show any notifications so it's kind oh, of hard okay. for him to communicate with her because he only uses xmpp for communications except for phone calls you know oh although I, there is a way to do that with xmpp as well to do uh audio oh, yeah, calls. yeah you can do audio and video with it too it's all yeah. basically how the server backend set up. 
and you can set up like there's a checkbox in the freedom box deployment of it that you can enable the um there's like an extra media server element to it that you can enable basically and it's the same uh media server element that jitsi needs nice okay no, it's just escaping nice. me what it's called it <clears throat> yeah i love to hear that jitsi's a part of it been a big fan of jitsi for a while as i've talked about numerous times over the past year so um yeah i guess uh and, and any other thoughts on uh um you know the the mess messaging apps um where we should you know where where we should look next uh um i mean it, so it sounds like x uh, it sounds like other than ios users which um hopefully people are getting off of ios devices generally speak i i, I mean hopefully you know hopefully um but at the same time um you know xmpp you know the jabber jitsi route looks looks pretty solid um, especially with the the ease of implementation with the Freedom Box, which um, once you know, um, once yeah, do some testing on that and get that get that going. Um, that'll be a really really awesome feature, um, really awesome. Um, really also, what's cool about XMPP is, uh, in case you don't know it, you can um, uh, I don't want to say federate them, but if you have an account on one XMPP server, you can uh, message another account or be in another group chat, almost like, uh, it's, like it's like email. It's like email. Yeah. Yeah, in case you weren't yeah, aware, which is pretty cool. You know, it's actually more true to the how the internet was supposed to work to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. Yep. I mean, other than that, there's what? Matrix or, uh, yeah, Matrix, right? And then there's a bunch of different services that tie in with that whole ecosystem. But I'm not very familiar with that. And from what I've seen, it's kind of just people making their own uh, Twitter style, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> just saying the same thing well, to each other that, and posting memes. <laughs> I mean, there's also like, I mean, for you know, free and open source social media. There's the whole Fediverse of uh, federated social media pro projects right now. Yeah. You have like yeah. the diaspora um, part of it. Then you have like the Mastodon forks and all those can basically talk to each other and share users. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah I, I know mean, there's that's a lot. Yeah, I know there's also, um, for that, there's also some, like, universal ban lists. Um, so that's something to be aware of, too, because I know there's uh, somebody in an XMPP chat, and somebody was saying something against trannies. So then the, they, a group of those got together and put his server on a ban list. And uh, wow. on like a you know like a blacklist, so yep. he's mad about that. But something else to keep aware of. But yeah, I, I mean, sure. from what I've seen with XMPP, it seems like it's not used that much, which um, is not necessarily a bad thing because uh, you know, kind of like the whole Elon Musk recommended everybody to go to Telegram or whatever, and then everybody did that and. <laughs> Like a bunch of uh, sheep, so. But Telegram's not really secure either, because like by default their chat is unencrypted, and mm -hmm. most people don't change the defaults because. But I think you guys have already talked about that on your podcast before, so some you're already aware. I mean, of. No, I mean really, a lot of those again, for sure. places, the 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 real threat is the metadata they're collecting as much as like what you're saying you know the conversations can be completely end to end encrypted in a strong way but the metadata itself tells a bigger story than what your conversation does a lot of the times that's oh yeah like you uh you're talking about like your ip address and your location data and all that or or other things um yeah i mean there, there's a lot i, I mean there's I mean, there's the browser fingerprinting, there's location data, there's um, just metadata that is specific to the, to the network. Um, like that's one of the things about Matrix that makes it undesirable for this situation and is the fact that it collects a lot of unnecessary metadata. Um, whereas like the alternatives we've been talking about don't collect any. 
Um, and metadata will rat you out just as much as what you're saying a lot of the times. So, I mean, people, I mean, right now, just, um, I mean, there's this big news item where in um, basically uh, it was a British, um, British contractors, special forces contractors just got um, drone striked or missile striked because of their phone metadata because they were picked up outside of the, uh, like an S like SAS in installations, I believe in, um, I want to say Poland or, or somewhere like basically somewhere where the Russians had planted IMEI traps that basically take all of the um, data from the phones that are being turned on when people come out of the door of the secured facilities, they were collecting all that information and they were correlating phone numbers with, um, you know, former British special forces and basically using them for striking data, you know, like for targeting data um, in the war over there in the Ukraine. Dude, that's so, pretty I mean, cool. I mean, not cool that they did that, but I mean, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. that level of technological, um, you know, thought process. That's pretty, pretty interesting. It's good to know about. Um, oh yeah. yeah. In, this, have you heard of dirt boxes? Um, not specifically. So, so um, uh, from what I've heard and, and looked up, sometimes the U.S. government flies around major cities with these things called dirt boxes, and they uh, they basically take all the packets of all the like, you know, 4G, 3G um, wireless communications and, um, mm -hmm. and log them, you know, oh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for you, future yeah. use. Yeah, it's like a variation of the stingrays. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, same, that's, same exactly. That's, basically, that's what the Russians were using, basically. They're just, you know, their version of the stingray. And they were and collecting so, all this and so uh, you said they got drone striked, right? Was it because they were in control of the cellular towers and could triangulate where these people were? Uh, is that how they were able to well, do that? Well, I mean, the, the way things work is they had people that were infiltrators into um, Ukrainian telecom basically pass information along, from what I understand. So there's some um, social engineering that went on before this. Like it's this major hack, basically. Definitely. I mean, yeah, that sounds like a pretty big, uh, yeah, pretty a very big project. But I mean, that's there. There, that's the where things are escalating now. Um, there's no borders to this current conflict, and like being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and having your phone rat you out through your metadata um, could be hazardous to your health at this point. Definitely, especially if you live over there. <laughs> but um, but no, definitely. And, and the thing is, too, like this isn't just like you said, it's not just limited to Ukraine, especially as time goes on. Like um, this is stuff that's going to happen over here in the U.S. and the rest of Europe. I mean, if it's not already happened, I mean, we, we already talked about stingrays and dirt boxes. Right. So, I mean, that kind of stuff yeah, that yeah. is already happening here. It's just the question well, of are we going to be agree. targeted? You know, it's like kind of degree, right? The U.S., you know, we're people living here are more at risk of um, the cyber attacks that would want to zombie your system to make it part of a larger botnet than we are like of coordinates being given to for some type of strike because we post something on social media that was bad. Um, but that could change. Definitely. I was, I was talking to a guy the other day and he was saying now he stores all of his data on Google's cloud with uh, a Chromebook, right? And he's like, yeah, I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to hide. I'm like, well, yeah, right now. But like Winnie the Pooh is outlawed in China. Like if you have Winnie the yeah. Pooh on your phone in China, you go to jail, buddy. And he's like, yeah, but I got nothing to hide. I'm like, yeah, currently with the current government, buddy. You don't understand. And he didn't. He honestly didn't. Oh, for sure. And I mean, just, you know, someone taking over your account and putting something that's illegal in there. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of Ooh, that that yeah, goes on with um, being, you know, yeah, sorry, especially a Google Drive. No, no worries. 
especially a Google Drive, right? I mean, that's like a, a file distribution point. If someone can own one of those, they can put whatever they want on it. So it's, and then it's not tied to them. It's tied to a, the dumb jackass that owns the drive, you know, so. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but when see, what some people do is uh, through Craigslist, they'll pretend to sell something and then they'll be able to authenticate a Google account with the sucker's number who, uh, who tries to buy the uh, product from them. Oh yeah, yeah. And then, you know, your phone number's tied to that, right? Your identity. And then they can put whatever the, you know, like you said, whatever they want on there, criminal uh, uh, stuff, and then you go to jail. And that's a very good point. Yep. Or even, like you said, just somebody gets your password because, you know, it's fluffy bear loves spaghetti or some, something stupid, you know? Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I don't want to get too off track, especially, you know, you guys, uh, I don't really know you guys. You guys don't really know me. I don't really want to. And you know, interrupt your conversation, but no, you're all, all, all good. No worries, that's, that's man. Valuable, so that's all valuable stuff. No worries. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to duck off, guys. Sure. So thanks for thanks for joining, Bon. That was that was uh, valuable stuff. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, no, it's great. Great connecting with everybody, and uh, uh, good luck with everything else. Right on there. All right. Um. Well, that was great. That was a uh, very interesting, guys. Very interesting. Um. So I. Uh, so Josiah. Um. Got a little deterred earlier. Um, which was fine. I, I, I was, uh, happy, happy to, uh, have the, uh, happy to hear the conversation, but, uh, um, Jamin, right before you hopped on, Josiah was talking about the Pasnia general Bitcoin fund. We were just going to get into, um, you know, talking about, you know, the, um, potential, you know, uh, um, metadata, I think, uh, you know, Bitcoin UTXOs and information associated with it being, um, automatically logged to chain analysis might be a big, pretty big deal. So, um, Josiah, did you want to, you know, give a, a brief overview of, uh, of, uh, of that or would you like me to? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I can't talk about it like in detail, but, I, but I do know, like I, I did kind of find out about it. Um, just kind of like on Twitter and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and through, uh, I think uh, one of the Bitcoin pages or something. Um, but, uh, basically, you know, with the, the standard, like, coin joins through um wasabi wallet i guess they're now being uh or this uh company what is it called z snacks or something snacks, yeah. yeah something but yeah but i mean that's like a centralized uh company that's basically going to begin like blacklisting um certain uh I, i'm not sure how they do it but basically through um through the coin join feature that's through that wallet. So that's what, what really got me towards, um, looking at, uh, Samurai. I haven't looked at it in detail as you have, but, um, I plan on, uh, probably switching over, uh, shortly here. So, um, just yeah. kind of wanted to get some thoughts on, uh, on Samurai and some of the other different options too. So, yeah, so that so that's also this is also kind of a public service announcement for for the folks at Pasnia. Um, so so basically, um, we've had uh, um, call, our, our colleague uh, you know Max Hillbrand um, over from Europe on the podcast a number of times. Uh, he's a contributor to to Wasabi Wallet, um, and uh, um, he's talked about the possibility of you know like other coordinators. There are other coordinators out there, and this is like the zk snacks main one. But at the same time. Um, we were talking about this before we before we started recording, you know, um, earlier on in the assembly. But um, for um, so what what this means, and I guess let me let me um, spell this out a little better, is that if you send if you um, you know submit your coins to a coin join in Wasabi before they're mixed and before you have privacy, um, they're going to be screened or somehow screened. I don't know how it's they haven't announced how that's going to be done yet, but somehow screened by chain analysis companies whose biggest con contractors are governments. So. Um, it's not like, uh, for it's, and, and it's so backwards too. It's like this, like supposedly like hardcore privacy outfit, like, you know, like coin join all the coins and then they're like, yeah, but we're going to, um, blacklist and use chain analysis first. Um, it's, it's backwards. Like, I mean, it works so great. It worked so great. And so that's why it was so disappointing to hear about that it was like, there was, there was so much to like about Wasabi and the wallet and like some of the future projects that were going on there. Like, so, um, 
Yeah, and 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 like, it is like what I was, it is, I guess. yeah, and, and like like I was saying that like and, and Max has talked about it on Twitter like yeah there are other coordinators but it's like if if uh, if an outfit will will do that then like I don't know if I want to like use that service anymore right um, yeah. whereas like uh, um, we'll, we'll talk I mean we can talk about it um, talk about it but um, but but samurai um, you know like the they had the same um, what spooked wasabi or zk snacks into. Um, doing this wasn't even like a government regulation or anything. It was um, the same letter. Financial Times reached out to Samurai too, and there was you know money tied to a you know recent exchange hack or something that was traced through Wasabi, um, and um, the this this news outfit sent a letter to him asking about it. Samurai basically told him to f off and you know legal language. And um, Wasabi, I guess, a couple of days later said they're going to start blacklisting UTXOs. So um, well, I guess. Um, so like, so like automatically there, and I, I heard, um, I guess it would have been the guy who runs the Samurai Wallet account on Twitter, um, that, um, there was legis pending legislation in the UK too that would have made it difficult for, it would have made it difficult for them, um, for some reason. I don't, I don't know what the legislation was in particular, but, um, but Samurai just left the UK. They moved their entire oper base of operations somewhere else where the legislation was you know, wasn't an effect, would have been in effect. So like, I appreciate that business, you know, so-called business model a lot better than, um, you know, not only just like rolling over to governments, but like preemptively, um, you know, rolling over. So, um, yeah, I guess that's, this is also kind of a public service announcement too for, um, for, for Pazians. Um, and why, um, yeah, with the, with the ghost phones, um, you know, all of James incredible work getting these ghost phones out to folks. Um, you know, I've been able to test out, um, Samurai. I've been able to actually, you know, do a coin join and got, uh, you know, some coins in a, in, in a remix right now. So. Um, it's pretty sweet. There's a lot of neat features on it. Um, you can do peer-to-peer -peer coin joins. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, Bonnie Fest this year, we could do, you know, peer-to-peer -peer coin joins in person. Um, there's pay Um, yeah. there's all sorts of cool features on Samurai that, um, um, that are worth exploring. Um, and, uh, I've, I've been enjoying it. Um, I've definitely been enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's really all, really all I can say on it right now. Um, I've been, yeah, I've been, been using it for a month or so and I'm, I've got to, I, I've I've was doing a test a test coin join essentially, but now I'm I'm pretty much sold on it, um, and uh, yeah, it's solid stuff, solid stuff. Yeah, right. it's good to hear that there's like the minimum is like forty bucks or or you said you did one for like forty dollars. I think like with Wasabi it was like it was getting really exp expensive. I don't know what the most expensive minimum was. Um, but at the time it seemed like it was thousands of dollars, you know, just to like, yeah. um, to, to like get that initial privacy. So, yeah. And, and there's also another podcast I'll mention that, um, that came out, I guess it would have been, um, it's one of the Citadel, Citadel dispatch, a Bitcoin podcast. It was like episode 15 or 16 when they talked to, um, they talked to Nopara and, um, the guy there, there's another coin join service called, um, Let's see if I can, if I can, um, like, uh, join market, join market. Um, and they were talking about, so I guess there, are, there's, there might be some, but some, some issues with Wasabi too that weren't, that were supposed to be resolved in 2.0 that aren't, um, such as things like address reuse, which can really fuck you, um, if you're trying to, you know, do a coin join and all. So, um, yeah. that's, that it's, they said, I mean, it's, it's claimed that it was fixed, but then there's an account on Twitter that shows, um, that it's not. So, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. All I know, all I know for sure is that um, Samurai is, uh, seems to be, you know, um, at least a touch. Me, but it's been extremely, extremely user friendly, um, and you know, it's uh, it's going well so far. So yeah, that's pretty much what I can offer. So, uh, what do you guys think about like the privacy coins, like Monero or something else like that? Yeah, so I'm I I I I uh I like I like Monero. I like Monero at one point, and um, I still appreciate the I still appreciate um the I still appreciate it um, as a project. But um, the problem is is, is I, I always I have so many issues trying to trying to use it. Um, there's just there's just a, another instance um within the past week where I had to I, I took I took downloading a, a few different wallets, um and I was gonna I was just gonna hold on to some Monero, but. Um, I had, I had too many issues with it. So I just, I just, you know, switched over to Bitcoin. Um, so like that's where, and maybe I just have really, really bad luck with Monero. Like if people can, if people have better, maybe, yeah, maybe it's just me, 
But uh, um, if it works for other folks, then I, I've, you know, I've the, the tech behind it, you know, on-chain privacy, um, you know, from the get-go, I think is great. Um, so that's pretty much my my my, my take on it. Um, I, oh, that's cool. I I honestly don't have much or any experience with Monero other than like mining like six cents like literally six cents worth of Monero on a mining pool and that's it but uh, I, I was just curious what your take was um, I remember though you, you did say that in a podcast that was one of the issues that you had with Monero was I think you you weren't able to spend it right like you had issues being able to spend it and you're like eh it didn't good yeah I could, I, it was locked for like six months um, after a hard fork and then yeah it's just it's just not it's it's not the most easy not easiest easy you know it's not user friendly for me um and so yeah it's, that's that's it's, just it's, I'm at. Oh, i was just gonna oh go ahead Sides. Well, i was just gonna say right uh, you i i you we've talked well we you and i talked about this when this after this happened because i had the same issue as, as you did it's a lot more user friendly these days because um, I was somebody that I, I mentioned it earlier when we were, you know, we were going to talk, ho hopefully talk about the, uh, the Bitcoin mining and stuff, which we're going to have to put off. But the, uh, I, I did, I was, I was able to successfully mine Monero uh, a few years ago and a little more than what you say, six cents. <laughs> um, uh, I actually, I figured out how to build my own miner and got a bunch of it, but I, I went through the same problem you did. And then I just left it alone for like, I don't know, a year or two. And when I went back, the new uh, GUI wallet they had on the uh, on the PC ran a lot smoother. And all I actually had to search through because I had multiple accounts. I couldn't remember which one I actually left all the ones in. <laughs> so I had to go through all the seed phrases before I finally tracked down the right one. Um, but I was able to transfer everything easily, um, most of it to hard uh, to, to cold storage. Um, and I was able to move it to uh my the, the the phone i use on my uh, the uh, the wallet i use on my phone and was able to uh, spend it and receive more um mm -hmm. so it's not a problem anymore so, well, so if you, as long as you still have the keys to your other one you should just check it out and it's, it's so a I lot still... you, just, you have to sit through it took less than a day hold on it took less than a day to actually um download the uh whatchamacallit um the blockchain yeah the chain thank you um uh to download the blockchain and uh i mean it may take a little, a little longer on the sticks for you but um you should be able to access whatever you didn't have before <laughs> oh, <laughs> what so, you couldn't before and it's a lot smoother these days so I've, I've gotten i've gotten it all back it just it was just locked for locked for like six months but i it, okay. like i said there was there was like a, a an instance within the past week and it was it was with multiple wallets um on the ghost phone even like cake wallet which came really really recommended um, so like I, I tried, I tried like three of the most recommended wallets and each one of them had like this, like I, I, I was, I wasn't able to figure it out and I'm not, I, I, I'm not a dummy at, at these things. Um, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, a developer or a hardware hacker like Jamin, but, um, I've been, I've, I've done these things before. Um, and I've done a lot with Bitcoin, but with, uh, with Monero, I've, I've had I've just continuous problems, um, and different problems each time it seems. Um, so it, again, maybe it's just my mm. luck. If it works for yeah. you, then, um, then fantastic. Like I, I, you know, that's, that's, fan that's great. Um, that's great. Um, yeah, not, doesn't work for me, but, uh, um, I guess, uh, where were we at here? I guess, oh, we we're talking about, uh, samurai, samurai, I suppose. Um, I don't really have much else on the on the, on the subject. We made the the little uh, public service announcements. Um, I think it's uh, um, again. I don't think it's. I don't think uh, you know the Wasabi wallet is still open source and such. So like, if you're just using it as like a, as for storage, I don't think that's necessarily bad. Um, but um, for me, it's just like I I, I didn't um, I didn't use it that heavily anyway. I hadn't gotten I hadn't really gotten um, my my desktop situation um, private situation hardened up necessarily and wasabi was a, a desktop one so like i said when i got Andro when the android i just started to, to test out the samurai and it's, it's been great so um that's that's kind of where i'm at but uh, we've been going for for quite some time and I'm, I'm sure uh some of you guys have some other things you'd like to attend to this evening um so i guess i'll just uh leave it kind of open ended here and uh, was there anything else that uh, anyone else wanted to uh bring up uh this uh, first ever passing a second realm assembly or um i guess uh questions or or anything uh, of the sort And if not, then I suppose we'll begin to wrap it up. <laughs>
um, <clears throat> could I ask a question real quick? Sure, yeah, please do. So, 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 from listening to the podcast and from looking at your website, it seems like PASNI is like a federation, or is going to be a federation of small, uh, permanently autonomous zones. I think is what you call them, right? Yeah, essentially. And yeah. Mm -hmm. to join. And to join, you pretty much stake like a certain amount of uh, crypto, and then you're given uh, like federation status or something like that, right? So, um, bas so, so basically, Pasni has uh, is, is, that's another way to think about it too, I suppose. Is yeah, a, a, a federated network of sorts, um, but uh, um, yeah, a decentralized network of uh, permanent autonomous zones, uh, places where we can where we can be free and, and exercise our autonomy, and. Uh, um, yeah, that's the, that's the, um, yeah, that's the, the, the big idea. And as far as, as far as joining, it's, it's, uh, really just, uh, um, it's, it's a worldwide thing. Um, there, there's folks ever, Josiah mentioned, uh, Roots Pasnia, uh, in New York. There's, uh, one in, uh, Michigan. Uh, there's, uh, one in Colorado. There's, you know, one, uh, you know, here, Veritas Pasnia. We're an hour and a half northeast of, uh, St. Louis, uh, in the USSA. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, that's uh, that's the, the the idea. And then as far as what we're what we're doing here, um, specifically, um, the stakeholder way to think about it is like a cooperative. Um, uh, I, I guess uh, um, joining a cooperative um, per se. So there's uh, um, you join, and depending upon uh, um, for the honorary, which is the unvetted um, stakeholder uh, portion, um, you can uh, depending upon your donation, you get perks like uh, you know for a certain amount of donation, you get a a flag. Um, for the uh, for the you know the full tier, you get a, a passport and an ID, etc. Um, so um, and then access to the second home network that we're building and such. So that's that's uh, um, kind of there too. But yeah, all the information's uh, um, there on the website, and it will be revamped at some point. Um, that is one of the one of the projects for this year. That was something I put together pretty quickly in a in a couple few weeks time, um, and it's uh, it's not great, but it will be better. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully that uh, that that's uh, an answered your question. Do you have anything else? That's cool. Yeah, I, I live in California, so I'm thinking about moving out. And your project sounded interesting uh, for, you know, the the future. So mm -hmm. moving out to a more free state. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so so pretty much what I thought was uh, accurate then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, that's good. You, you, it's you, good. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you 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 had a pen, it seems. So. Um, yeah, I appreciate you. Appreciate you joining. Not sure. Uh, do, you, do you mind if I ask how you how you found us? Um, how you found the the podcast with Pasnia? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Um, so to be very specific, how I found you guys. Uh, one day I was looking up. Uh, I, to give you the the longest version, mm -hmm. uh, what is it called? Cypherpunk. I looked up like cypherpunk on uh, YouTube using. Uh, uh, new pipe client, so <laughs> not YouTube's official website. But anyway, um, so I used that. Uh, your one of your podcasts was one of the search results, and I put it in a playlist and kind of forgot about it for three months, and then started looking through uh, the videos in that playlist. And yeah, that's that's pretty much how I found it. Was I looked up cypherpunk, not not cyber, but cipher, like like cryptographic stuff. <laughs> Right. Awesome, man. Well, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's great to so, uh, yeah. Mm hmm. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, actually, you uh, uh, actually, I'm wrong. So <laughs> I watched a video and there was a guy who was being interviewed, and then your one of your videos was suggested. I'm, I don't know if it was a second or third like suggestion. So, I mean, like, I click on a suggested video, and then your video was suggested on that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it was actually one of the guys that you interviewed. I'm trying to remember who it was. I don't remember who it was, but it's one of the guys you interviewed. Sorry, but yeah, I'll let you guys get back to, uh, sounds like you're closing up the, the Jitsi meet, which is cool, but. <laughs> hey, no worries, brother. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, happy you're able to make it and, uh, hope you, hope you like what you see and, uh, and, uh, get involved and, and how, how, and, uh, um, you know, however, however you'd like to, even if it's just, you know, joining the Pasadena Seed Exchange or something, um, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyone else, uh, any, uh, closing topics, uh, questions or closing, uh, you know, thoughts for, for anyone out there listening?
Okay, well, uh, I suppose we'll uh, begin to wrap up. I uh, definitely appreciate you guys uh, all all being here on Jitsi, and uh, for all those out there uh, that tuned it, tune in after the fact. Um, if uh, you haven't already, please check out the website, Pazania.com. And uh, please do also check out the show notes for, uh, I'll put a link to uh, to learn more about the Pasnia Bitcoin General Fund and uh, how to donate, because um, that is uh, really, really a, a great way to uh, uh, to get involved. So um, I uh, I guess we'll, we'll close it out there. Um, thanks, everyone, for, for, uh, for joining. And uh, yeah, until next time. Mom, are all countries coercive shitholes? Most are, yes, but have you heard of the Free Republic of Poznia? No, what's Poznia? Poznia is the first free country in existence, right now. Founded upon truth, peace, and voluntarism, rather than coercion, as you pointed out. POS itself is an acronym for the freedom strategy of building permanent autonomous zones, places in which we can be free and exercise our autonomy without the threat of force. Oh, cool, so a free country exists. Where is it? Well, unlike the traditional statist country structure, Poznia is a decentralized, geographically independent country. So, in essence, it's everywhere. How do we visit or join? Good question. Poznia is a vetted network, so not everyone is welcome. Reputation must be verified and the use of coercion forsworn. But soon, a directory and map both public-facing and private, will be available at posnia.com. And for now, gatherings of liberation in the second realm are already happening at Veritas, Posnia, Roots, Posnia, and Fox Prairie, Posnia, to name a few. Those interested in joining this Posnia Second Realm Network can become founding or honorary stakeholders. In addition to gaining access to discounts and specials at Veritas, and the wider network, other perks exist, such as passports, stakeholder dinners at the consulate, access to healing technologies at the Department of Health, Wellness, special Posnia silver coins, and more. And for those who want to get involved but in a more distant manner, there's also the Posnia Committee of Correspondence Telegram Chat, the Posnia Seed Exchange, and much, much more in store. Grandma would love this. What's the website again? I want to tell her about it. Ha ha ha. That's funny. Grandma's been a stakeholder for longer than you've been alive, but if you wanted to tell your Uncle Mike, the website is posnia.com, and linked right at the top of the page is the 2021-2022 Stakeholder Bulletin. There, he can find a more thorough and wordy explanation of the Second Realm Network currently under construction. You could even invite him to Vanufest 3, a now annual, week-long gathering of liberation at Veritas. This year, it's from September 26 to October 3rd. Sounds like a blast. Posnia.com. Okay, thanks mom. Anything else I need to know? One thing, dear. Always remember, Vanu is yours for the making and the second realm is yours for the building. See you in the second realm.